I'm John Spotswood. I'm the chairman of Hampshire Against Fluoridation. I've been looking into fluoridation for over 10 years now. And when I first started 10 years ago, I thought, well, this isn't a problem. It's been around for years. Lots of people have had it and it must be okay. But in fact, when I looked, I found it was absolutely terrible. What was happening is all sorts of problems, all sorts of problems were coming out of it. It wasn't solving the dental problems and it was unethical to do. So those are really my three main reasons for uh, opposing water fluoridation. One is, it is not effective. It replaces uh, dental decay, small, a small amount of dental decay, by uh, a lot of dental fluorosis. It's not safe because the research shows that there is a lot of uh, health problems due to drinking fluoride. Why on earth would you drink something that only has an effect on the surface of the teeth? And thirdly, there is the issue about ethics. By what right do people have to put in our water, in your water as well as my water, a known toxin on the basis that it might reduce a few uh, dental health problems? And might is the emphasis there. So if we just talk about the, the dental side of it, because that's what is always justified by the people who want to put it in. Uh, years ago, 50 years ago, when they first started doing it, we had about five or six times as much uh, dental decay as we do now and that is reduced enormously so five or six times less now than we had then uh, it is reduced across the world it is reduced in every country it is reduced whether it's fluoridated or not fluoridated and it's just the same you get a much lower rate of fluoride uh, of, of uh, dental health problems now than you did then and therefore any benefit that it might once have has completely disappeared uh, you will not improve the health by a measurable amount in the south of England and Southampton area by doing this. In fact, research has shown that the only reason that it was affecting the teeth was because when people drank their water, their uh, teeth, the children's teeth, came out a year later than uh, if they did in unfluoridated areas. Just think, what's that doing to the body? Why is it disrupting the, the eruption of the teeth? But the dentists say, well, this, this means that there is less decay at the age of five they always quote the five-year-old statistics. And the point is, at five, if you've had your teeth for a year less, you have less decay in them. That is, that is obvious. And what is effectively happening is we're delaying the uh, amount of caries by about a year. And this goes on throughout life, so you've got a year's delay throughout life. And that really means that by the time you're an adult, there is very little difference. It does not improve the dental health for adults at all, and only slightly for five-year-olds now that we've got such be so much better teeth. And the second part about it is that if it's affecting your teeth, why on earth would you think it's just affecting the teeth? Uh, it's also going into the body and affecting all sorts of things. You can see it in the teeth in dental fluorosis. What happens is 48%, and this is the research findings of the York Review, the main UK review of, of the science behind fluoride, and that said 48% in fluoridated areas get dental fluorosis. This is specks of white in the teeth or it uh, becomes then brown specks on the teeth and eventually it becomes actually uh, decayed teeth. It actually damages the teeth substantially. It is um, rare to get damage, substantial damage, but you can get really bad teeth uh, looking really bad just from the water and the fact that you can also get fluoride in other things like tea and obviously in toothpaste. And children should never drink fluoride. They should ne not use uh, toothpaste with fluoride in because they tend to eat it and it is really dangerous and the Americans have recognized this they said you should not add uh, water that's been fluoridated into baby's uh, formula uh, because it's dangerous and a growing child this uh, fluoride gets into their glands into all sorts of parts of the body and it is uh, really shouldn't do it you also shouldn't do it for kidney patients because they can't deal with it when we drink fluoride uh, we can only get rid of about half of it so throughout your life, if you drink it all the time, it accumulates gradually in the body, gradually gets worse and worse, more and more of it. And that's the problem with the health side. So I said, it doesn't help your uh, teeth significantly anymore, and it has a big downside of dental fluorosis. But also, when you drink it, what does it do to the rest of your body? It attacks the thyroid gland, because uh, thyroid gland needs iodine. And iodine, if you know your chemistry, is very similar to fluorine. And fluorine is being more reactive will tend to go into the thyroid instead of iodine. And iodine has been shown um, 
a shortage of iodine is one of the, the major problems in the world, preventable uh, reasons for mental retardation. It is uh, linked to overweight, obesity. Uh, it is linked to uh, reproductive problems. And so damaging a thyroid is really serious. And in fact, doctors 50 years ago used to give you the same sorts of levels that you get in the water of fluoride um, so that you, uh, to reduce an overactive thyroid. So now, if you've got a, an average fire thyroid or a, or a slightly weak thyroid, it'll make it worse <coughs> drinking the water. That's just one effect. It goes into the bones, it makes the bones brittler. It means you old people will tend to break their hips more. And then people say, well, we've had fluoride in water for 40, 50 years in some places, and uh, it's difficult to find this effect. Well, in fact, studies have found the effect. There have been loads of studies about this, and it has been proven um, or been shown in, in different places. And the point is, you actually get brittle bones when you're about 70 or 80. That's the worst time for brittle bones as you get older. And no one's had it in their water for that, that long. So I think we've got a time bomb waiting to go off as people get older and have had water, their water fluorinated for so long. Um, and then there's things like cancer. It's actually been linked, and this has been uh, studied carefully and it's been replicated, that five out of six cases of uh, bone cancer for young men, this is just young men, not young women, uh, are being linked to being in a fluoridated area. So I've got two sons here. They are 23 and 21. They've been brought up in a non-fluoridated area and they've got no fillings between them. They've had good teeth and that's down to uh, responsibility for eating properly and also for cleaning their teeth properly. It can easily be done. It is not something rocket science. You can, you can, you can sort this out by taking personal responsibility for it. But the point is, if they then got osteosarcoma, i.e. bone cancer, and they were living in a fluoridated area, I would know that five out of six uh, of cases of bone cancer had been caused by being in a fluoridated area, been caused by fluoride. And uh, obviously it would be devastating for me, but just think of, of what this means to loads of other people. It could be your son or anyone's relative could get this, a, a young man just uh, developing the world and they get bone cancer. And this is um, this happens, this has been seen in fluoridated areas. And that's just one that's been well documented. There have been other allegations which other people have, have denied, uh, but there are, are worries about other cancers as well, but this is the one that's been documented well. So basically it is medically irresponsible to put something like fluoride into water that everyone drinks. Uh, you don't have a choice about it because it's forced on you. It is a, a dangerous toxin. Um, and it has been known for a toxin for years. It used to be used as a rat poison, that was it, how, where it came from. And is now used as insecticides. It's very good at killing things. And it works, as I mentioned earlier, on the surface of the teeth, in the sense that it helps kill the bugs that cause decay on the teeth. Um, but as soon as you drink it, it's going into your whole body and has a whole body effect. And it is not helping the teeth. It is damaging the body. So it is really dangerous to put it in water. You don't want it in water, uh, although you may want it on your toothpaste. You spit it out. Do spit it out. The final point I've got is about ethics. By what right does anyone have to put this sort of suspect toxin into everyone's water? Your water, my water. What right? We cannot get it out because the fluoride doesn't come out with normal filtering. You have to have a very expensive reverse osmosis filter to get it out. And also there's the point that it is medically wrong, ethically wrong, to force people to take something because someone else thinks it might be good for you you have a right to say, no, I will not take a medicine. And they are denying that right by forcing it in the water. What else can they put in the water? Prozac? What else? Maybe people may be happy with Prozac, but it becomes ridiculous. Um, so therefore, it is up to people to stand up and stand up and say, look, this is not right. People have to say, we are going to fight this, this, uh, this fluoridation of water. And if the, the, the people at the top are saying they would like to do it because it seems to be a cheap fix to, to improve dental health. That is wrong. And I just can't understand why people can scientifically say there is a case for doing fluoride because scientifically it is a clear cut. It is a highly risky practice. It is unsafe. It doesn't have the effect on teeth that it, that it used to have or perhaps did have. And it, so it doesn't work on teeth. And above all, it is unethical. So thank you for listening and uh, please join us in, in our campaign.